trying to video games, everybody. What's going on? I'm playing on the way out. Uh, hot dogs for dinner. Uh, it's my brave heart. <laughs> and I'm Mike. <laughs> Mike and I'm Mike. Uh, playing the way out. We play baseball. We're we're I think we're in a the trailer park for one of our families. Yeah. The trailer park boys. Okay, so we're looking for my wife. You got fire. I forget why. I think she has a she has a hookup for us or something. And also just to, you know, we've been in prison. But don't be a smart ass, just tell me where she is. Alright. I got a hammer! I'm a sugar! I'm like, I pressed the hammer! I'm helping! I put all the, not, not, I put all the nails in this one! <laughs> this game. <laughs> oh. There he is. Hey, Leo. I think I see your kid down there. Let's check it out. My, my child? My boy! I've abandoned my child! My boy! <laughs> The guy in Lord of the Rings, I forget, he was a steward of Gondor. Oh, yeah. My boy! Oh, the, the crazy one, not the one that was being poisoned, yep. but the one who, like, like he's still yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. Don't burn him. Sets his son on fire. Yeah. Ooh, it's my lady. Oh, it's the cops. Cops. Let's go put on our show. You, you, you got your dance moves down? Right, left, right, right, right left, left right, dump, left. and then we touch, and then we we do the, the the arm thingy and pass it to that cop with the epic mutton chops. Right. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, uh, oh no, it's a full oh, beard. A okay, right, left, from that right, side right, angle. Left. Yep. Drop your pants Jump. and touch your tips. Right, left, <laughs> right, right, left. <laughs> Drop your pants and touch your toes. I'm gonna show you where the wild goose goes. <laughs> Kiss, 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 then we kiss. <laughs> <laughs> now the dance routine is kissing. That's all we're gonna do. Kiss, 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 kiss. <laughs> Little smooch, here's my gooch. Pooch, pooch, pooch. <laughs> Put that shit in my hand. Fifteen bucks. The old man. Put that shit in my hand. <laughs> if that money doesn't show, then you owe me, owe me, yo. Owe me, yo. Owe me, yo. <laughs> Transition. Funny enough, you're talking about how uh, uh, Kid Rock earlier in the previous episode well, kind of went very political. I yeah. threw uh, um, through Ready Player Two. Oh, yeah. They talk about, yeah, they talk about how Prince at the end of his career went like really anti, I think anti-gay. Yeah, he became, he converted to uh, Jehovah's Witness and they're very strongly hope, like against the gay marriage and gay rights. Which is insane, as the game, the the audiobook or story explained, because yeah. at the height and middle and beginning of his career, he, he like created his own sex symbol, and he was he was a gay very, icon. A, a, yeah, like totally a straight icon. Yeah, it's it's I don't know. From what I so I actually I that was disappointing Still for research. me to, to learn too when I when I read that, but I looked into it. It, it was kind of this one. It was a part of his life, but he never really backtracked. He never really apologized for what he said, but um, he, he was kind of, he sort of eased out of it a little bit from what it seems like, but we'll never know exactly how many, how much. Because yeah. uh, he became a full teetotaler, well, for the most part, uh, except for the... You'd like uppers. tea? No, no, no. But In like, totaling? He became very much... He abstained from a lot for a little while and then went back into it. And yeah. I don't know. It's a complicated... Prince was a complicated guy. That whole scene, that whole section of the book, though, was really cool. Going oh, you did read it. You read it ahead oh, of me. My bad. I read it. I got it as soon as it came out. Oh, did we not talk about this? I got it as soon as it came out. And read it. Yeah. Like, immediately, over the summer. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that I... I guess I read it after you. Yeah, and I, I I blanked. Oh, it's it, and you were telling me like, yeah, it starts slow, but it does get really good. Yeah, and you were right, and it's. I guess we shouldn't try to spoil it during the episode, or does it matter? No, I mean I wouldn't spoil it. There's, there's spoiler alerts. 
Uh, oh, there you have If you haven't read Ready Player Two and you plan on it, then you can skip to this part of the episode at this time. We're yeah. Gonna stop talking about it. Oh shit! Look at that. Yeah. Part. The 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 amount that Prince is in the book, and then the, how they have to battle him, and they use oh. Morris Day and the uh, in the time. And... I, I want a video game of that. Like why like, don't, it, why is in there already a Ready Player One and Player Two video game? I know. 100% agreed. And yeah, like I'm I'm I've uh since then I've gotten into Morris Day in the Time. Oh yeah. Through all the information was in that book about how Prince started that band but they got so good and there were so many heavy heavy hitters in that band that they couldn't just be backups Prince's to him. backup band, yeah. Well, yeah. Did he start it or would he started with them and then he became the star and then I no, I them? think he like assembled them. You know what I mean? I like, remember. I think Prince was already Prince. Maybe earlier Prince, but he was already kind of Prince. Yeah, by the way, anybody listening, this is just information I got from a fucking book. No, and but I don't but even remember it exactly. Part but... of why those, Ready Player One and Ready Player Two, part of why they're so popular is, like, he went way, in, I mean, the, the, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's kind of meta in how the books are about how the obsession of these people in pop culture and how it can take yeah. over a person's life. But like to properly do it, he had to obsess over pop culture and get all these. So his details, from what I've seen, are are pretty spot on. <laughs> he yeah. did his, he did the research and obsessed over it. <clears throat> but yeah, he also I mean he he alludes how Prince was like uh, uh, not just an icon, but he was a hero for a lot of transgender and gay and and, and bi and whatnot because he was like making it okay for them androgynous and, same with uh bowie yeah exactly that's the word same with david bowie after the ziggy stardust when he kind of became this yeah the it's thing. just about love but, yeah that's why it's so but disappointing yeah, to the, learn that it's so good like man so and then when they do the you. fight scene, this is the real spoilers, people. Yeah, this is when the real they do spoiler. The fight scene. Oh my god! And there's seven different versions of Prince. Yeah, and he gets and the, the the white guitar, oh. like the classic, and it's and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's basically a Guitar Hero battle. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Yep. That was so cool. And the all the descriptions in it were so vivid and wonderful about like the the smoke on the floor and like how when you're in the video game you can't mention things or else you get like struck by a lightning bolt or something yeah uh like it's just awesome like he questioned something and like he said something negative just... about prince and just... <laughs> yeah you just get fucking struck by a lightning bolt oh my god <laughs> yeah the whole universe that they create is just is that he created in in the book is just like I said, I won a video game. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know what's interesting? Yeah. Oh, no, continue your thought. I was going to say, I don't know how. It feels like it would have to be, like, it would have to be a VR game, too. They'd have to have it in VR. Like, that's kind of the point, right? But Yeah, I mean, they could start with, even on this system, I'd be okay sitting here. and I've even, you know what, what I was going to talk about is very similar and, and say that um, with how we're all living in different locations. And I think that's happening to a lot of people. What? I can't go through the gate. I think it's just for me. Cause it's the sun. Uh, yeah. You, gotta go you might, you might have to go help the, my wife, oh, my, okay. my wife. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll help her. She got badonka donk. She's thick. Can I hug you? Well, if you guys get together, then my wife and I will be kissing cousins. <laughs> Eskimo, Eskimo <Well>, bros. <laughs> Eskimo bros. Um, I am. Um, Not kissing I cousins. I love where I live, thing. but I miss you and I miss Matt. I miss you a lot. Yeah. And too, um, I'm I'm becoming more and more. I mean, taking care of the planet. You know me. Very high priority. Me and me and my wife. We use fucking biodegradable trash bags. Yeah. Like. We we're we're uh, we're very concerned about all sorts of things, and we try our hardest. And I love the planet. I love being outside. But I got to admit, I, I'm ever since Ready Player One, and, and especially two, I'm getting very excited to get not even an an immerse immersion suit. Like I don't need to feel anything, well, but I want to put yeah. on a headset. I want to lay in like lay on a comfortable bed or, or oh he put the ladder. He's coming down. Um, yeah. 
and I want to be able to like like this, but virtually kind of virtually. hang out with you. Yeah, virtually hang out with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where like I can see my avatar and kind of like the way we play Sea of Thieves. Yeah. But I want to I want a VR headset. I I don't even care if I'm using an Xbox controller. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. But yeah, I want a VR headset. And then of course eventually it'd be nice to be able to literally give you a hug. So and I guess have some sort of fake pr feeling of receiving the hug. So they then have, a body suit would be they've, nice. They've started to make that's what's cool about the Breader Player One is they're they're they use like stuff that is starting to be a yeah. the thing. They just went, you know, years from it. But they have like haptic suits. They have um they actually have they have gaming chairs that are haptic. So you can tie it into your console or whatever you're playing, your computer, and then stuff will rumble at a certain time. <laughs> yeah. The very, very beginning of what this is. It's cool because we're like, you and me, we're, we're not the first generation of video games. Oh, no. But we've watched video games go from, like, Pac-Man, right? All the way to... Oh, my kid is terrible at basketball. Yeah, yeah, we're not... Ball, kid, come on. I know what you're saying. We're not the first generation... I, well, I keep getting ADD'd in, in this game, which know, is awesome. There's, there's so playing the much game. stuff to do. I'm throwing it with... There we go. But uh, um, I think by the by the time we die, by like our elder years, I think there really is going to be very well very well done immersion suits and like VR video games and, and be able to like essentially go to a pub with you, even if my body doesn't really move anymore. Like let's say I, I, I'm like very old and crippled. I might be able to put the suit on, yeah, and and we can see ourselves at our younger years, and go hang out in a fucking the Guinness factory pub with that beautiful view that I've seen on the internet, and yeah. you know what I mean, like affordably travel the world together and just do cool stuff. Well, yeah, I mean we've seen too, like especially this past year, VR VR headsets have gotten they've sold a lot, uh, they've gone up. Yep. Um, they're really getting popular. That's, that's why I game. I mean, I I was able to just yeah. barely get ahead of it, but so many people were building gaming PCs this past year that there's like a, there's a, literally a, a, a computer chip shortage. <laughs> wow. Uh, which is and even it's I think there's also a mix of um, there's less there's less people making, you know, because of pandemic restrictions. So there's less like mining for silicon. There's less people making chips. Um, yeah. But they're up. They're prioritized. Note, they're I don't mean to throw you off, oh. but I am stuck in this fucking basketball court. Yeah, you have to just play basketball with them for a little while. Fuck this. Okay, we're talking about stuff. Sorry, to, sorry, people listening that that uh, we're not really paying attention to the game, but what we're talking about is more entertaining, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I so you were it. saying? Uh, now? Yeah. There's just and they're prioritizing the the chips too. Um, for the automotive industry, which my first thought is like, who fucking cares? You really, you need to make a hundred thousand more brand new cars for us to not drive anywhere because we're stuck in our homes. Yeah. Are you kidding me? But you know they have such a strong lobbying group, and yep. in normal years, yeah, they do. Yeah, we do buy a lot of cars, but like. That's why they're prioritizing, not for people to have computers or to have more affordable computers for kids who need them to go to school because you closed all the because they we have to stay away. But yeah, no, of course not. That's no, the automotive industry. But anyways, I I was able to just barely get ahead of it, and I got my graphics card, and then like a week later, it, they were just impossible to get. Yeah, but you know what's funny it, is but, this for a lot of stuff. But continue. No, I was gonna say it's it's yeah it's part of it is is. You know, it's affected people who are trying to, they're doing hot, like it's a hobby. It's, I'm stuck in my house, I need something to do, I'm going to build a computer. Yep. But also it's why, because of the chip shortage, that's why Xbox, uh, the new Series X and the PS5s are so hard to get. Because we, there's a chip shortage. <laughs> yep. It's not that they intentionally made less to sell them out, it's like, uh, we made as many as we possibly could. <laughs> yeah, we're trying. But, uh, <laughs> You know what I have to say to that, Andrew? Yeah. Kiosk. Oh, God. It's back. Oh. 
Do you give him a kiss? Ooh. And I'm not even making a joke kiss. You gotta give him a kiss. Okay, give, him, give him a little white kiss. That's a sweet alligator shirt, too, by the way. <laughs> hey, you. do you like this uh, jacket I got? I stole from an old farmer. <laughs> that we tied up in a closet, and your father tried on his wife's hat. And then we both sat in a bed together. And stole and destroyed his truck. <laughs> yes. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, man, it's. I'm glad that I'm glad that you got an Xbox because it's like it's yeah. given us a way to hang out. Even, yeah, you know, it's, it's totally improved my emotional well being. Like, it's it's it really not this, it's not the same. And but I am gonna come to Hawaii soon, and you're gonna come down for Big Bear at least, and also yep. for, for your for OC fair. But yep, I bought my tickets. I'm All going right. out. Hell yeah, I'm there. You know. I hope I don't have to get a nasal swab, but I'll do it. I don't care. Bluff or threaten? Bluff. Let's bluff. I like bluff. Threaten. No. You want you want threat? Oh, okay. That? Yeah. Now nah, let's bluff. You gonna stop me? You'll have to excuse my But um, I mean that's right uh, though. That's one thing that sucked with so Robbie because they moved to, to Virginia or he moved to Virginia a while ago. But yeah. until they they just bought a house, they bought a property relatively recently, uh, which is awesome. Um, it's, I'm really excited to visit there at some point. Uh, and also, it's big enough to where, according to Virginia law, if you have a certain amount of acres, you are allowed to get a liquor license. So they have enough. Oh. They're gonna the plan is like we're gonna make a bar across the street. I'm like hell yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yes, I like that. And I, Mike and I will come run the bar for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And by run, I mean run it into the ground. <laughs> yeah. If um, I had any hand in running a bar, I would either take it too seriously, which you kind of need to run a bar. Well, sure, yeah. Or I would get liver disease within six yeah. months. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, no, I got to go too. Are you being sarcastic? I like how the sound changes and needs, it's reverberating inside the plastic housing. You're pinching off a loaf? <clears throat> I guess, but um, before they so the problem with their property is it's so remote and it's you just he, they don't have good internet. Apparently, he said that that the the local fiber optic internet is they're gonna start installing stuff pretty soon. So hopefully that changes. Yeah. But you know when he moves, it seems like they're really working on that. It's internet is a necessity. It's 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 not a privilege anymore. It's we need this for. I mean, especially yep. this past work past year but yep. even before then it's like this needs to be a utility that is provided for like we're in my opinion this. worldwide we're 100 percent. yeah um, i'm no longer like you know you know the funny thing <laughs> heads up people we're gonna get political um like i love how our generation and younger we're not really focused on well okay i can't speak for everybody because plenty of people are just focused on the united states but I don't give a fuck about our government anymore. I care about the world as a whole. We're all in this together. So yeah. when it's like, oh, yeah, we need to have Internet as a, a provided. I'm like, yeah, third world countries like we should. Wasn't Google or another company trying to do like a air balloon slash satellite system that provides Internet everywhere on the planet? I feel like I've, I feel like I heard of that. I don't yeah, know. yeah, that might be Google. They would have the resources to do that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think too. What's interesting is that attitude of of really more globalist and, and global thinking globally rather than just locally is because of the internet. Because yeah, you know, one hundred percent. This past two generations, so Gen Z, um, like it's a normal thing for them to have the like they never they didn't grow up without it. Which, as you shouldn't, and and <laughs> caring about places other than just where you live, all you have to do is learn and get a yep. diverse understanding of the world. Um, fear only comes, fear comes from ignorance. Ign learning yep. <laughs> destroys racism, and that's why pe the racist structures always go after learning first. Yep. They always go after education and journalism and truth hey there, first. You want to have a go? Because 
An educated populace doesn't just do what you want. Come on, Andrew. Don't walk past me. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to give him a kissing contest? <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> Kiss his heart. And... Ma -ma 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 -ma. Let me warm up my lips. Mommy, 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 mama, mama. I love to sing. Go on ahead. Pin me down, yeah. baby. Mm. I'm not even trying. Mm. You're so strong. It feels good. Strong. <laughs> was that your strong hand? Yeah, it was my strong hand. <laughs> I stiffed it myself. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, man. The internet has a lot of downsides. Here we gotta go up, but it's it's also it, I think over time it's really gonna create problems, but also offer a lot of solutions. Yeah, I mean even the the most the negative parts of the internet is it's it's just a very very small minority. They're just the loudest. They get the most attention, um, but it's yeah. it's it, the grand scheme of things. There, it's it's a blip. Yeah, the amount of. Well, I, I kind of I'm referencing like false information. Yeah, but even then. Yeah. They just get attention, and you know it doesn't help that then traditional media is using that. But, what is this? Um, what the hell am I looking at? Dipshit, can you explain this shit? Maybe I'm naive. I don't know, but I I just my and I think you probably agree with this. I think most people are good, and I, think I agree. Yeah. The overwhelming. If we let. <laughs> If we let them have the reins, people who are good, then, it, you know, I don't know, just, I always teach, I teach with kindness, lead, lead with love, lead with kindness, that's, that's all you can yeah. do. That's a good way to put it, man. I'm running after this guy, I don't know why, but I am. Because racists and bigots, they don't know how to love. And, I don't feel bad, because, you know. They do that to themselves, but it's faced with learning and yeah. This is hitting especially close to home too, because LaSalle, the school board, just had the high school is adding. They were they had a vote to add um, not not provisions, but like guidelines to ch train teachers on uh, adding more social justice and more. Um, creating a, re a genuinely diverse and inclusive curriculum and classroom and then also yeah. adding uh, an ethnic studies class and yeah uh oh you have to come save me oh i think uh, oh no maybe not no 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 keep going. Keep, keep going my bad i got that wrong um the only and that's great and the only problem is that attracted you know LaSalle. i'm proud to be from la salle but most of the time, but this was for a minute. This was a time for me not to be. Um, it's very conservative. Most of Rossmore is very old, yeah, um, and conservative. And there are a lot of conservatives and extreme right wing. Proud Boys showed up to protest. Or they threatened that they were going to protest. We got on Fox News. Um, Wait, about creating a diverse curriculum? The people prote protesting that because uh, oh. the conservatives wanted to oppose it and to the point where yeah to the point where there was even they had to have the meeting the school board meeting on zoom because they got enough credible threats against the meeting and people in the meeting that they had to do it safely and they did and good news is almost unanimously they voted to add those provisions and to add that ethics studies class so um and they, they had, apparently they had um, comment cards because it's a public meeting. So people, because they couldn't, because they couldn't have, hold the live meeting in person, they had people, you can submit comment cards and then they, they had to read them. It's a public meeting. They have to read them. And it was yeah. overwhelmingly positive and in support. There were a few dummies, but, you know, they showed their hand. They had nothing to do with, they really didn't yeah. care about protesting this. They just wanted to push their the racist agenda uh, but they're yeah. cowards at the end of the day most racists most most people are most of them are cowards yeah well they're really ignorant because racism breeds racism and you when it's very hard to think that your uncle your parents your your town raised you with uh 
old ways of thought that are incorrect, <laughs> that are that are dated and all the you know, just beer beer <laughs> on the construction site. <laughs> that's really funny. But yeah. I think that's what's been hard too is that because my parents did not teach us that way and they didn't their parents didn't teach them that way. Um so I thought, you know, I've had this sort of false, I guess, apparently false image of my community that there's so many more. But it's also, at the same time, uh, it's, oh, you have to come over to me. Yeah. At the same time, that's, it's not really true. It's not an overwhelming majority. It's just, they're just really loud and ignorant and they yeah. just make the yeah. most noise because then at the end of the day, like, no, we voted for it. The people... Voted to have a diverse, more diverse curriculum and and get these different voices, but that's yeah, pretty cool. But it's also it's cool and also frustrating at the same time. Like, grab it, grab it, grab a hold of my strong mechanical arm. But, but I'm proud of I'm proud of the school board. I'm proud of LaSalle High School, and and I'm proud of really the the students there because it's it's this whole thing is almost completely student led they asked for this they want these classes they want this curriculum and that's they're the future so that's pretty awesome that's Whoa. by this is by far the best part of being a teacher so far is stealing it's, it's getting to to help and talk with <laughs> and i don't know how much change i don't know how much help cuz i don't want to take too much credit uh, but help give them the opportunity part. to Give them the space to to start to think about stuff like that. Yeah. Especially in you know we've been doing physical psychological disorders, mental health, and uh, we talked about uh, we started talking about treatment and therapy. And one of the things I asked yeah. them is, we well, started by talking about um, well, if you found out that you had a f chronic physical illness like diabetes or asthma or arthritis or something what would you do I'm like oh yeah. I would immediately go to a doctor and try to get treatment I would try to get the most amount of help I can and then I said well what if you know what if a friend had it you're a really close friend someone you're super close with what would you what advice what do you give them and they're like yeah same thing treat it as serious as it is and go get help and then I said so why is it looked differently oh what if it was oh, no. what if it was psychological illness not physical would your advice yeah. change I said, no. Andrew, help me. I'm, I, I am, I'm coming. I'm going very slow. Andrew, I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Oh, no, I'm fine. And then I asked him, like, if, you're, if your advice would change, why is it different? Why do... <laughs> why does health... Why does mental health... Why do mental health facilities get closed down before physical... Before physical therapy? Yeah. Yeah. Why is it prioritized less? And it was all, like... They hit the nail on the head. It's because people are ignorant of the real thing. They don't see it. They don't think it affects them. They don't believe people. And part of it, too, is the older generations were taught to bottle things up and not talk about them. And I told them, like, look, you can, you can stop this. <laughs> you can at least affect change. I got him. You're, eight, you're gonna be 18 if you aren't already. Under, if, we, if, if you take anything away from this class, remember this. If people who have psychological disorders aren't broken, they aren't worse, they aren't bad people. They're just, some of them just need help and we're all one yep. and no one's alone. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really, it's really not that hard, like honestly. Like what a sh what a terrible life it must be to hate somebody else, like genuinely. And and what's their day like? <laughs> living with hatred and living with. You know, it's surprisingly normal, man. They just they're just like I said, they just got a different. And that's that's and that's terrifying. And that that's just normal. Yeah, you know that's. It sucks, but you know, it's kind of logical when you just think about. But I, we're talking about upbringing. But when we're talking about like brains, it's kind of logical to realize that there's there's a full spectrum of people. 
Oh, for sure. And, and every brain's like, they did blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, hateful people. It's really weird. And um, this is why Daryl Davis is my hero, man. Daryl Davis, all the way. You know? For those oh, out there who don't know who Daryl Davis is, he is the African-American gentleman who has, con uh, not converted, that's such a weird word, but through friendship, kindness, and conversation, and willing to be in an unco uncomfortable situation, he has become friends with many, many, many Klansmen who have since becoming friends with him uh, um, left the Klan and uh, um, changed their mindsets about racism towards African American people and other races. Oh, you know, is yeah. this is this someone different than the uh, there was the movie and it's a true story, the Black Klansman. and this is a different guy, right? No, this is completely different. I'll send you stuff about him. He really is my hero, and I think you're really gonna love, like, really love this guy. But he's a musician, of course, because musicians are the ones who really change the world. Amongst many, art, it, art, Artists. art changes the world. Yeah. Um, Good art challenges the way you think, and it challenges. Supposed shoot to. him. Supposed to shoot him. Um, yeah, but Daryl Davis was a, a boogie woogie piano player, and he lived in the South, and he's from the South, and he just was. He has this amazing personality where he's like, "Yeah, I'll uh, I'll talk to Klansmen." And, you know, he just arranged meetings with people and, and would just sit there and talk to them. And he ended up going to a bunch of rallies. He's been to, like, more... <laughs> he's been to a bunch of KKK rallies. And he invites them to his gigs, even though they hate his ethnicity. And uh, over time, heals the wounds and helps them evolve for the better and um yeah that's awesome he's a good man he's still alive and um i think he had a ted talk or something like oh yeah you know he he's a he's a good dude and and he's still doing his thing and yeah like like i said he's my hero because he's so calm and peaceful and kind and, but he's willing to be in an uncomfortable situation and stay calm and kind and loving and yeah, I mean, could you imagine going to a clan rally and having them be, like, not hurt you or anything, but just mean and and the conversation's crazy. Yeah. But then at the end of it, you're like, you know, my band's playing on Friday night at this. You guys want to see my band come play? <laughs> yeah, you guys want to come hang out at the bar and watch my band play? And then in between sets, they'll uh -huh. go over to their table and fucking hang out with them, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm I'm glad you shared that. I also we cannot overlook the fact that we talked about this really awesome person while our characters <laughs> tortured and interrogated a guy <laughs> to tell us where the <laughs> drug dealer is who screwed us over. Uh, <laughs> he, he stayed calm, like tell us where he is. <laughs> the the dichotomy of this episode <laughs> of conversation <laughs> between you and me and what's happening in the game is oh my gosh in, it's astronomical it's, it's awesome it's, yeah <laughs> i don't think if it's i such done, a deep if conversation if i had done this with anybody else we couldn't have gotten that result <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> weird but also fantastic oh uh, yeah hey, he's my hero oh here let me get the blowtorch to see if that'll get this guy to talk <laughs> <laughs> let me nail gun his right <laughs> kneecap nail over gun. and over again <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh. For real though, that is very cool. <laughs> so we're bad at video games. My name's Leo and this is Potts over here. Yeah, I'm uh, Jasmine, Actually, actually it is time it is time to to, to to say goodbye for today. So while you're holding the gun and we're sitting in a car. Hey, we're in it. So wow, this this game seems to their set pieces are about half an hour at a time, which is pretty perfect. It's perfect. Leo keeps the gun. I don't want the gun. You take. You keep the gun, Leo. Okay. I'm only doing it because I think. Yeah, Mike. I shouldn't let your guy. You shouldn't let. I shouldn't let you have the gun. <laughs> I mean, if we want to entertain the masses, give me the gun. Right, but we give also the, have give learned me the baby. that I would like to see the the metal shooty baby. Uh, <laughs> the metal shooty baby, baby. <laughs> but uh, okay, so on the next one, we'll uh, 
We're going to rob this Roy and Rogers gas station. Um, but also, just remember, live your life, lead with love, <laughs> be kind to people. Yep. When you rob the gas station, just be nice about it, I guess. Wow. And I'm Mike. And I'm Mike. <laughs> I'm afraid <laughs> we're bad at video games. And <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank <laughs> you.